Today, I want to talk a little bit about drinking, consent, and sex. I've been doing these cases in the military as a military lawyer for over 20 years, and I represent service members around the world. And I read the data, I look at the statistics, I keep up to date on all these changes. And one of the things that I don't see changing is who is held responsible when two people, two adults, decide to go to a bar, knowingly consume alcohol, and then engage in sexual encounters. You can probably guess it. It's a 50-50 thing, right? It's all about the equality. If you're gonna be accusing people, you figure it would be an equal standard. Well, unfortunately, that is not the case. I have yet to see a case or hear of a case where a woman has been charged with or convicted of having sex with a man that was too drunk to consent. I've heard of plenty of cases, even where the man reports, hey, I went to a bar, I woke up the next morning, I believed that I was sexually assaulted by this woman. I was so drunk, I passed out, I was unconscious, and the next day she joked with me about what she did to me while I was laying there. That's actually a case that I saw recently. What happened is that guy went to CID, CID starts questioning him. They put him in the suspect room with the two-sided mirror, and they start interrogating the guy who was the victim. Meanwhile, they bring in the woman and they put her in the victim's room. In the victim room, the interview room, they have couches, they have stuffed animals, they have rocking chairs, they have nice music. The walls are actually painted and they have paintings on them of like bright sunny ocean scenes and everything to make people feel good. There's like tissues in there and Coca-Cola and water. And they start telling her, hey, this guy's accusing you of having sex with him while I was too drunk. And after talking to her for a few minutes, she realizes like, oh my God, I'm being a suspect. Oh, well, I was drunk too. It was the comeback. And guess who got charged? The guy did. What I'm getting at is this. Men keep going out there in the military and having sex with women that they're picking up at bars. You think you're picking up someone who's willing and consenting? You have no idea who you're bringing home. You could be bringing home a sociopath. We've had multiple cases, many, over the last couple of years where there's a woman who's like a black widow in the sense, a black widow is a woman who kills her husbands. It's the same pattern and there's always the same story, but there are black widows where they seek out men, they seek out engagements where they're drinking alcohol, hooking up with men, and if things don't go well the next day, like the guy doesn't call them back, they hit the guy with an allegation, a false allegation of sexual assault. And we see the patterns there. And this is where I'm saying there's plenty of these that I've dealt with, where we pull the record and, and the person who's 24 has testified in five court martials every time they're the victim. And like their whole career in the military, they have never done anything other than be a professional witness against various men that they met at a bar and had sex with. And so this is a, a pattern we see, although that is not admissible, by the way. Congress has blocked us from admitting that type of evidence. We know it, but we can't bring it up in front of the jury. But my advice to men is you better be careful because you start having sex with someone in the military who's drinking or is mentally unstable, or you know has a pattern of accusing people of past boyfriends, and they have a history of being, quote, abused by all these people, then you're gonna be next. It's the victim mentality that we see a lot. And it's usually these woke people that are everyone victimized them. Every man that they encounter is taking advantage of them, abusing them, mistreating them. It's easy to spot these people, but their problem is they play upon men in the military with the sympathy card of, oh, I'm the poor victim. And what do military men love more than probably anything else, being the hero. They wanna be the hero, they wanna help this poor victim. A lot of my clients say this, she was abused by her, this person and that person and her ex-husband and the second ex-husband and the last boyfriend and the dude she met on Tinder. They're all mean to her, abused her, mistreated her. And I say to these guys, do you think it's a coincidence that you are now the abuser? Well, I didn't abuse her, sir. Well. You just said with, a, with conviction that you believe that all these other people abused her. Why? Well, because she said they did. Well, now she's saying you did. Now she's saying you did. So this is probably the biggest red flag that I have out there for young men is falling for someone that is part of this victimizing woke culture. They're the victim of everything. 
They're very combative. They're quick to throw allegations. They have a lot of psychological and emotional turmoil. Do you really need to be getting into bed with them? If you have any common sense and you have any inkling of self-preservation, you need to have your eyes open about what you're dealing with and what's going on and avoid these people. Avoid the, the consummate victim because you're next and guess what? Just like you believed her, everyone else is gonna believe her and no one is gonna believe you. And so try convincing a jury of your peers in the military that the person is not telling the truth and, and you're just happen to be falsely accused as she sits on the witness stand crying and that you're sitting here falsely accused and you're innocent. It's easier said than done. So take responsibility for your own life. Take ownership over your life and quit getting in the bed and messing around with these crazy ass people. This horrible and life threatening and it destroys lives, not just your life, but your children's lives, your family's life. It, it'll cause heart attacks in your parents because no one wants to watch your kid go through a rape trial, whether they're innocent or guilty. But it's even worse when you're innocent because they try their best to convince the jury that you're guilty whether you are or not.